Hello, I am obviously not in my studio. The lighting's gonna suck and the audio is gonna be even worse. But I did want to talk about something that a lot of you noticed over the last couple of months. I got some new glasses, and while I'm not one for vanity, I think these ones are worth talking about. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. In a couple recent videos, you might have seen me wearing some new specs. And while they do look great, that's not the reason that I bought them. These are the Even Realities G1, a set of smart glasses that I think do something that all smart devices should try to do. And that is, stop trying to replace my smartphone, and instead offer features that are new and unique to the smart devices. Rather than cramming a full video display, a pair of cameras, and a slew of third-party apps that work worse than the ones you already use on your phone, these glasses use just a single app on your phone to enable specific features. The Even Realities app offers specific use cases rather than trying to be everything to everyone and replace the much more expensive device that we all already keep in our pockets. The full list of features on offer here is not exactly long, with Quick note, translation, a teleprompter, even AI, navigation, general notifications, transcribe, and a general dashboard for things like weather updates. While I will touch on a couple of these, as I mentioned, I bought these for one feature and one feature alone, and that was the virtual teleprompter that I'm using right now. I've been doing quite a bit of content outside of my studio this year, and I often script my videos pretty much word for word. So I've been looking around at different teleprompter solutions that I can take with me on the road. In my studio, I've got an iPad and full teleprompter mounted to a tripod, but that's a bit too large to carry with me. So you can see why I was drawn to a set of glasses that I can simply toss in a bag with my laptop. Starting off, let's take a look at the display itself, because as I mentioned, these are not full-color augmented reality glasses like you might expect on an Apple Vision or even an Xreal Air. These are a monochrome pixel display for simple text and pictographics. You're not going to be watching videos or seeing pictures on these. They're designed for information only. One thing I've seen repeated in reviews about the G1s is how they don't look like smart glasses. While they are some of the lowest profile smart glasses on the market, I think it's also very obvious these have something going on. There are a pair of batteries back on the tips of the temples, the frame themselves are obviously thicker than normal glasses, and at certain angles you can definitely tell there's something going on in front of my glasses on the lenses themselves. The main use case for the G1s are to discreetly show notifications and other info while allowing you to keep your phone in your pocket, but still keep in touch with the information that you need. If you received a text message or an email, you can reply to it with text-to-speech. If you're walking or riding a bike, you can get navigation as a heads-up display, allowing you to keep your phone in your pocket and your eyes up and aware of your surroundings. One of the most pushed features from Even Realities, though, is the ChatGPT integration. You can press and hold the touch-sensitive band on the temples and ask GPT pretty much anything you want and get answers directly displayed on your glasses. In both message replies and ChatGPT, the text-to-speech has worked great for me in the month that I've spent with them, and it's really never struggled understanding my words or hearing me in noisy environments. And while I'm not a huge ChatGPT user, it is nice to be able to get answers to questions quickly without needing to grab my phone. But here comes one of the first downsides, and that's there's no audio on these glasses. Any interaction that you do with them is going to be text and display only, even asking ChatGPT questions or replying to messages. It displays the answers in front of you rather than telling you the answers through either a set of speakers or any kind of bone conduction. But like I mentioned, I bought these for exactly one reason, and that was the built-in teleprompter mode, allowing me to display my notes or even full scripts directly out in front of me when I'm trying to film videos on the road. I've used the G1s now in three different scenarios. One video I shot in my home studio. I used them in a video at Supermicro's Media Room, as well as during the subsequent interview that I did there. And in likely what even realities envisioned the teleprompter being used for, public speaking at 45 Drive's Creator Summit earlier this month. At this point, I've got a pretty good handle on what they're good at, where they struggle, and if I'm going to plan on using them long term. 
Now, obviously, I'm in a hotel room somewhere, which is exactly why I bought the glasses in the first place. And while I haven't seen this footage that I'm recording yet, that should be quite obvious why, uh, I'm sure you all notice that my eyes keep looking off camera. While you can adjust some of the aspects of this display, like virtual distance in front of you or the alignment vertically in your vision, you can't change the margins of the teleprompter left to right. My teleprompter at home is a 9-inch iPad sitting around 8 to 10 feet out in front of me, which basically means my eyes have to focus on a pretty small spot out in front of me, and any motion in my eyes is going to be basically imperceptible to the camera, because it's all looking within the 4 inches of where my camera lens would be anyway. The G1 glasses, though, are closer to taking up about a 50-inch TV's width at the same 8 to 10 foot distance, meaning that I'm looking more than two inches off to the side, I'm looking closer to two feet off to the side of the camera when I'm reading. And that's if I'm able to keep my head looking in the right direction in the first place. Because remember, if I turn my head with the glasses on, the screen moves with me. It's not locked in place to where the camera lens is at, making it even more difficult to keep my eyes from drifting. And I'm sure the effect is even worse here because I can literally reach out and touch the camera that I'm filming on right now. While eye tracking is a bit rough, the text itself is fairly easy to read, and what's even more impressive is how the text can auto-scroll when I talk. You can opt to scroll manually with your phone, and my full text displays right here, so I can actually slide that up and down on the phone display, or with the Even Realities app open and the teleprompter section open, I can even use the volume rocker on the side of my phone to scroll text up and down. The manually scrolling with your finger sucks. It's unpredictable, it doesn't work, it jumps the text to random locations, and I've had a terrible time with that. The volume rocker, this isn't exactly the sleekest of teleprompter remotes, and the touch screen is still active, so I can't like put this in my pocket or even hold it and have it work when I'm trying to use the rocker. So I've had about a 50-50 success rate with that. But using the AI voice transcription has been fantastic when scrolling text in front of me. Using the AI voice transcription works fantastically well. Talking at my normal on-camera cadence, the G1 had no problems keeping up with my voice, even if I skipped ahead in the text, which I just did to make sure it would indeed work. It keeps the text up to date with plenty of time to spare. These worked great when giving my talk at 45 drives, as I had pretty much my entire talk scripted out, and the glasses made it easy to keep my head up while speaking, rather than staring at my notes on a laptop screen or pulling up note cards. But one thing that I found interesting was, after my talk, I asked people in the audience if they could tell that I was wearing a teleprompter on my face, and most of them said that even 50 feet away in their seats, they could tell that my eyes were darting around a bit too much to be natural eye movement. I wasn't connecting with individual audience members. It was very obvious I was reading something. Now, part of this is down to me, and I fully own that. I'm not the world's best public speaker, and I do rely on scripting when I'm presenting, whether that's on video, on camera, or on stage somewhere. Speakers who are a little bit more polished might have a different result, but I just wasn't able to keep my eyes pointed where I wanted them to be and be able to connect with my audience, and I have an even worse time when I'm trying to connect through a camera lens to an audience that doesn't exist. But circling back a bit to the overall usability of the glasses, I do have some thoughts. While Open Realities has open sourced their SDK, allowing developers to integrate features and usability into their own apps, I'm not aware of a single app that has actually done this. Even Realities doesn't have any information or apps listed as being supported, and the only experience I managed to test out in the last month was with their own application, despite the SDK being launched over a year ago. The features they have are a good starting point, but the lack of customization, whether that's in the software, the use of the individual features, or in the display, hurts them from being more useful outside of some very basic tasks. And while I've considered trying out their live translation feature, where the glasses will listen to someone speaking to you and live translate what they say on the display in front of you, 
That feature seems to be paper use rather than a monthly rate. So the more you use it, the more expensive it becomes. And a couple of their other features, live note taking and chat GPT integration, for example, those both rely on hard coded shortcuts to be used. That is touching the touch sensitive bands on the temples on either side of your head, right for notation and left for chat GPT queries. Both of them require you to touch and hold while you are talking. And if you accidentally let go, or it thinks you let go, the glasses will simply stop listening to you and you end up with only half of what you tried to say making it through. What's more is, while you can take notes and access GPT, you can't access your phone assistant, which seems like an absolute brain dead decision there. If you access Google or Siri to say, create a new calendar appointment or turn off the lights in your house, you're still going to have to take your phone out to initiate that prompt. The glasses won't forward what you're saying onto your phone and let your assistant do any more heavy lifting. All told, I didn't find myself using glasses much for general use. And most of that reasoning comes down to being limited to first party app support. I can't use Waze or Google Maps, only Evens built-in maps provider, so no live traffic updates and no route changes for me. Taking notes goes into the Even app only, so if you use any kind of notes app like Evernote, there's no synchronization between those two services. You have to get into the Even app to read the notes that you've taken. Translation is a paid add-on, and while it would definitely be useful while traveling, not being able to demo it out in action is pretty disappointing. And while the teleprompter is able to auto-scroll thanks to AI voice transcription, the lack of customization for the size and layout of that text makes my eyes dart around, removing any potential connection that I'm trying to make with the audience. And to be able to shrink the text down small enough to fit in a 12-inch square that's 10 feet in front of me, the resolution would need to increase eightfold because the built-in resolution of 640 by 200 pixels just isn't going to cut it. I really wanted to like and use the Even Reality G1 glasses, which is why I paid $600 to try them out. I've tried them in nearly every situation possible over the last month, and found they're just not quite what I needed or wanted, and I'm likely going to have to go back to hauling a teleprompter and an iPad around when I travel. Which is too bad, because as much as these didn't work for me, I think there is a ton of potential here with both some software improvements along with support from third-party developers. The hardware is good, and the voice transcription is even better. But for my use primarily as a teleprompter on camera and for public speaking, it's just not the right tool for the job. And that's the story of my new glasses that you've seen me wearing over the last month or so. And unfortunately, while you probably won't see me wearing them anymore, unless there's some update that improves the usability as a teleprompter. Until then, these are probably going to land on the shelf with the rest of my heads-up displays that I've collected over the years. But what do you guys think? Is there room in the market and is there enough potential use cases for a set of glasses that can only display text in the year 2025? Or are you looking for more augmented reality use cases? Sound off in the comments below. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And if you like the content that you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon. Link is also down in the video description. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to walk down to the hotel bar and grab myself a beer.